Munir. I'm from the Fulbright Association. I do a lot of the data and communications. Um, we also have Lisa on the line. Um, she is in charge of chapters. I'm sure you hear from her quite often. And we also have a special guest today, um, Rob Ellis from Fullwriter app. So he's coming from the UK, all the way from the UK. Um, so he's joined us very generously to uh, provide some answers of questions and some feedback um, and to kind of go over some things, um, some exciting new um, pieces of this. Um, just some housekeeping things. Uh, if you're not speaking, please mute your mic. Um, we can mute you for you, but uh, it'd make it easier for everyone to be able to hear um, clearly. So anyway, with that, um, I'm just going to turn it over to uh, Rob with some just kind of a brief overview of the Fulbrighter app and kind of some of its capabilities and why we're all here today. Thank you, Minir, and hi everyone. It's great to see some familiar names and familiar faces from last October, November, when I was in DC at the FA conference. Also nice to see some new people here as well. So just to introduce myself, my name's Rob, and I am the community manager for the Fulbrighter platform. Fulbrighter is a platform that was launched last August and is a new platform designed to be a global hub for Fulbright alumni and grantees all around the world. It's a platform that mixes elements of Facebook and LinkedIn into a single space where Fulbright alumni and grantees can come together to connect with each other, network, but also engage and collaborate. The thought behind the platform was that Fulbrighters are foremost thinkers, professionals, practitioners in their field, bring them together into a single space, regardless of where they are in the world, could have significant benefits, both for individual Fulbrighters, to offer mentorship opportunities, to offer personal development opportunities, but could also benefit the global community through developing innovative projects and engagement activities. So in this webinar, Munir is going to be leading um, a demonstration of the platform and some of its functionality. I want to say a couple of things in preface to that though. So as many of you know, some of you who were at the October, November Fulbright Association Conference, we talked in it about Fulbrighter then, and you shared with me some of your concerns about the platform and some of the things you're excited about. I think it's fair to say that one term that came up in a lot of people's feedback was the word exhaustion. Um, a lot of you felt as administrators that you were the platforms you had to administer, but you're also concerned about users becoming exhausted did I get muted? Am I muted? No, we can't. Okay, perfect. Um, a lot of you felt exhausted by the amount of administration you have to do, but also you said that users were becoming exhausted by the number of platforms out there. People were engaging with Fulbright through Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, individual platforms, individual events, and that was causing a burden and was lacking engagement. We've really taken some of your feedback to heart and over the next, over the last sort of two or three months, I've been working with the Fulbright Association to think about how best to launch this platform to you and help you to get most value out of it. So just a couple of thoughts about how we've done that. Firstly, we've really placed the emphasis on this being a platform for engagement, not administration. So some of the things that Munir will show you is we've tried to simplify the process for you so this platform is not about administering grantees, administering alumni. It's not about importing databases, sharing information. It's about thinking about engagement and building the community of which we're a part of. And Munir will demonstrate some of the things we've done to support that during this call. The other thing Hello? Asked, the other thing you've asked repeatedly is what are the benefits of the platform to your community? And I think there are a couple of things I'd flag up here that Munir will show you that proves why this platform could be exciting and could bring additional benefit to your communities. I think one aspect is that this platform is a global platform. We've been launched now for around about seven months and we have 16,000 users in the platform, which is already a good user base to engage with people working across various countries, industries and academic fields and that platform is growing every day. 
So it really brings that exciting virtual community together. I think the other thing the platform does, which I hope you'll see through Munir's demonstration, is it integrates some of the additional activities you're doing into one space. So the Fulbrighter platform allows you to manage events. It allows you to send out newsletters very easily. It allows you to post news articles or to import news articles from other platforms. It allows to mess you to message all your community. It allows you to find people in your area very easily and get them in your group. Over time, therefore, we really hope this platform becomes something of a hub. And rather than having to use LinkedIn, Eventbrite, MailChimp to manage disparate activity, we can bring this into one space. So actually over time, it reduces administrative burden rather than causes more. So I think that's my initial pitch. Um, yes, there may be some exhaustion initially setting this up, but I really hope and think from what we've seen so far is this exhaustion can be counterbalanced through enthusiasm and getting real value out of the platform. Um, as Munir said, I'm going to be around for the entire call to answer questions, but I'll hand back over to Munir now to talk a little more in detail about what the platform can do. Thanks so much, Rob. We really appreciate you being here all the way from the UK to join us for this call. Um, so I what I'm going to do, you say what? I haven't traveled yeah. in the UK. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Thank you for being remote for us in honor of social distancing. Yes. Um, so um, Rob kind of gave a good overview of some of the new things that we're doing that he's doing to help us with the, the um, chapter spaces on the Fulbrighter app. So what I'm going to do is share my screen um, and show you kind of what it's going to look like um, when you're going to be in this uh, chapter space. So let me go ahead and do that now. So you all should be able to see my screen. Um, and so this is the front end of the Fulbrighter app. And most of you have already registered as um, members of this app. You have to be a Fulbrighter, obviously, to, to be in here. But um, if you haven't yet, um, please make sure you check your email or your spam to, for the invitation, because there should be an invitation for it. And so um, many of you actually have already gone on here and uh, looked around and seen all the cool things that are happening in this community. Um, so I'm going to just briefly go over um, the front end of Fulbrighter app for those who maybe haven't seen it yet. Um, we do have um, a lot of people posting things about um, the coronavirus, some updates about Fulbrighters. Um, people add all this information related to things very much tailored for Fulbrighters. Um, there's some opportunities, jobs, scholarships. Um, and so this is kind of the global feed. So if you have Facebook, you would see something like this on your home. Um, you can post um, information like a regular, like a regular social media platform. Um, you can put a trip. So if you're going somewhere and you want to find another Fulbrighter there, um, you hit trip and you know it'll come up and tell you. You know, you'll basically advertise to people that you're traveling to a certain place. Um, it's, uh, a little laggy right now, but hold on, let me get it back. So um, you can also put events and job opportunities like, um, you know, things that you're, you're looking to post a job or post your resume to get a job. Um, well, I'm just waiting for my lovely internet to do its thing. I might ask everyone if you could uh, maybe uh, shut off your uh, video, if, it's, if at all possible. Sometimes it helps with the bandwidth um, when we're in a meeting. Um, additionally, um, we'll be mail, uh, emailing this out. Lisa will be sending kind of a follow-up to this webinar um, with the video of this session and so that you can see it later or send it to other chapter members who weren't able to be a part of this. Um, also, Rob has graciously created tutorial videos for parts of the back end of this platform. Um, so as soon as it comes up, I will show you. So just bear with me here.
All right, we're back. So um, the, I think one of the, the best things that we're gonna show you today is this uh, Fulbright directory. So basically these are all the 15 some thousand Fulbrighters on this application. And um, if you drill down and you zoom in, you can see where people are at and actual Fulbrighters where they're living. Um, so Rob has um, been able to, um, once somebody uh, comes into a state or one of these chapter people, let's say you're in San Francisco, um, Rob has been able to automatically add these people to your chapter space. So if you are in Northern California chapter, um, the people who live in this region will automatically be added to your chapter space. Um, the same with a statewide chapter. So if you are in, um, if you are Arizona chapter, all of the Fulbrighters in Arizona who are listed in the Fulbrighter app will now be added to your chapter space, which I'll show you. So that's a really cool feature. So you won't have to go out and find people. They're just going to show up in your chapter area. Um, and eventually, hopefully, you'll be able to encourage all of your chapter members to get onto the platform if they're Fulbrighters and uh, use this to its fullest so that you'll have a, a very robust um, chapter area. Um, also in this, you can filter by um, program year, cohort year, um, field of study. So there's a lot of ways to um, look at the data in this directory. And you can find Fulbrighters around, around the globe and in the US. Um, so yeah, um, we'll just keep going. So there is the communities area is kind of like the, um, the groups area. So you'll see the Fulbright Association here. This is us and we'll go into that more, but, um, where you're, where you'll be is your chapters will be here as well. Um, there will be groups within the platform. Um, so here you can see some of them right now. They have a little lock button because they're not public yet. But once you decide that you're ready to uh, launch your chapter as the admin, um, this will become public. And so the people from your state or your chapter will be added to your group and your chapter will be live at that point. So that's where these chapters will be. Um, and inside the chapter space, I will show you later um, how to basically navigate throughout that that process. Um, so um, let's go to, let's also go to events. So there's not that many posted right now, probably due to COVID-19, but this is where the events would, would live under the events tab. So once you have a chapter event, it would go here and would be public for everyone to see. So if a Fulbrighter is, you know, visiting, visiting uh, Arizona or Arkansas or Louisiana, our newest chapter, uh, they would be able to see the chapter, the, ev the event there with the little bubble and more information about it like this. Um, so the next tab is the news and reflections. So um, there's news from around the Fulbright world. Here's some from our website actually. Um, and I'm gonna show you a little later about how um, when you post to your uh, chapter website, the WordPress one that was created, um, that it will automatically be able to be sent here. So you don't have to post it in two places. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to go in to um, the Fulbright Association space. It'll look extremely similar to the chapter space that you'll have, but it has its populated information. So um, it'll be a little easier to kind of look around. So if you click on your, let's assume this is your chapter space. This is a Fulbright Association. Um, first, you'll see the banner. So you'll want to add a banner, maybe a, a group photo of your chapter people. Um, and then you'll be able to also put a little video, uh, an about, kind of some information, um, just as if you're populating a um, your website or something. So um, you can also add, if you have a Twitter or Facebook, you can automatically add a feed that will be here. And so whenever you post on Twitter or Facebook, it will automatically show up here. So you don't have to post it in two places. Um, we're trying to get, get it to the point where, you know, this is as easy as seamless as possible. So your tweets will show up here um, or your Facebook posts will show up here. 
Okay. Um, a very cool thing about this uh, space is when you post to this space, um, at the end of the day, people who have become users of your area, so chapter members or people who are living in your area, um, they will actually get an email to their inbox say giving a summary of the, the news from your chapter space. So if you just want a quick message to people about an event or something, um, this would be a, a way to quickly do it. And they would get an email um, since they're part of your user group. So that's the feed. That's the live feed. Um, there's also, you can click on users. So we have almost 1600 people in here, but if this was your case, um, maybe you have a little less, but some chapters have a lot of people. So it could be a lot. And so you could see all the people that are in your group. Um, and this would be your chapter space and you could see where they're located. You could click on them. Um, so yeah, uh, your events. So obviously we postponed our conference, but here's the event that was there. Um, and this will po pop up on the public map um, to, sh to show everybody that you're having an event in that area. Um, so yeah, so uh, the news, this is where the, um, you could publish news about what's happening in your area. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and go to the back end of this, um, uh, the chapter space so that you have an idea of what it'll look like when you're an administrator. Um, Let me get a coffee, hold on, peeps. And thank you for, for chatting. Um, I'm gonna get, keep going, but I'll, I'll go through the, scroll through the chapter again, the, the chat to see uh, what's up, okay? All right, so let's go to, if you go to manage group, which is this red button. Okay. So when you click on that manage group, this, this pop-up will happen. So this is the back end. So once you're an administrator, you'll have that button, that red button that says manage group. And this is basically where you will populate the banner photo, um, a, a video if you have it, some, a description. Um, and I'm not gonna go through all the details of this because Rob has been very gracious and has created a video for each one of these tabs that goes into very much detail about how to use each one of these tabs as an administrator. So I'm just gonna quickly go through just kind of some of the, the, the main points here. Um, the users, this is where you would be able to um, email out uh, or look at your, the members. Um, and so that's that. The events, probably the events the news and the campaigns, these three tabs will be used the most. So for events, this is where you would create um, your events for your chapter so that all the Fulbrighters in this community could see that. Um, so Rob's created an amazing video tutorial about this. So when you click create a new event, it will walk you through similar to what you've done in other platforms, the time, the location, uh, the title of the event, um, a link if you have a registration link. Um, and that will go out to the public. Um, and you'll see this little public uh, checkbox. So you can check it to see if you want it to be out into the, the masses. So um, the next part is news. And I think this is really great because um, your website for your chapters has a RSS feed, which basically means it can automatically send to this platform the posts that you make in your website. So if you're the Georgia chapter, I know they've already made some a substantial amount of posts into their website. Um, it will automatically come to this news tab and it will be, be available for the public. So once you post on your um, website in WordPress, it will automatically come here. If you don't want it to, let us know. Or if you're like dying for it to happen, let us also know. But this is a really cool feature so that you don't have to do it twice. We're trying to limit the amount of stuff you have to do that's redundant. 
So this news tab, once you post, it'll go to the news tab on the global feed. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is go to campaigns. So under campaigns, this is where you could email out to all your users, like a newsletter or some information and then a, a little nicer form. So uh, it would be similar to uh, like a, like a MailChimp type of uh, apparatus with, um, you know, information. So you would do your draft, you could, you know, your design of your, um, your email. I can kind of go in here, but again, Rob's made an amazing video on just this tab. So you can go ahead and look at what, what you can do, but basically, you know, sending photos, pictures, um, text, links, all those things would be available. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty intuitive. So, oh, let me go back to the manage group area. So anyway, so that would be the campaign. So you could send it to all your users who are all in your chapter um, who have already been automatically added. If, they're have, if they move to Georgia, they're gonna be automatically put into your user group because you're that chapter. And so they will, if you have a campaign, they will get that, okay? So, um, so yeah, so let me, let me go, go ahead and back out here. Um, and kind of go back to the front end since we already did the back end, just to show you again where this will live. So if you publish posts on your website, it'll go into this news area right here. Um, and the events, they'll be right here. Um, and for the, the global community, if they hit like, um, if they hit events up here, that's where the events will live on the map, if that makes sense. It doesn't make sense. I see some people shaking their head. It doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> so so let, let, me, let me go back out and just make sure that um, I've kind of explained this very well. So you have the, the global, you have everybody, the global feed, okay? So that's everyone. And all these tabs up here, that's for everybody. So when you go to events, this would be um, all the events for the entire community. So all 16,000 people, whatever groups post events or individuals post events, they'd end up here. Um, and then under your community where, you, where your space is, um, they would also be in that area as well. So if you make it public, if it's a private event, you could have a private event within your space but if you make it public it will end up in this tab here for everyone to see okay um so yeah so i'm i that was kind of a brief overview i didn't really go into too much detail about the instructions because the instructional videos will be coming to you from uh from from the videos that rob made for each aspect of the back end for the group, um, but let's go ahead and um, I guess we can turn it over to some questions and answers. I think Rob has been answering some. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, I please. see how you get into manage the group, but I didn't see how you got out from managing the group back to the, like how do you go between being an admin and a person? Okay, yeah, so um, when you click this little X, you would, you would go out. So as an admin, you're already a Fulbrighter. So when you're in here, you're already a person. So like if I'm in here, it says this little M, I, it means Munir. So when I post as Munir, I'm just posting as me, but I can post as an admin, I can post on behalf of the group. Um, but basically you are, you're just you, but you just have this other option of managing the group on the back end, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you just click the X to get out of it to be able to go back to the original screen. Correct. Yep. Okay, that's easy. Okay, yep. thanks. So
So I'm gonna also, I'm gonna hit on opportunities. I don't know if I, sh I sh put that, but um, this is an area where you could post a job posting and they are working on linking things to LinkedIn. Um, and Rob's still working out on that, but there, we will have hopefully more uh, robust um, job postings here. So you'll see that somebody can, um, is hiring hiring just, this is just for Fulbrighters. So the really cool thing about this space is that this is only Fulbrighters and people, um, even when they sign up, like they have to be confirmed as a Fulbrighter. So um, it is a, it's a very specific space for people. Um, yeah, so f the questions about admins for everyone, um, assigning admins. So you can uh, basically email Lisa and um, Rob will assign the admins on his end. So um, the admins have to be assigned by, by Rob and the Fulbrighter app. So if you wanna email Lisa, um, that would be the way to do it. Can I chime in for a second? Yes, here? please go ahead, Rob. Mm -hmm. So there's a question about friends of Fulbright in the chat. And I think this is an important topic. So the Fulbright platform is a closed platform. That means it's only for alumni and grantees of Fulbright programs. That's important because we wanted the platform to be exclusive to this global community. What we have done though, is elements of your group area can be made to be visible to the wider community. So if for example, you publish an event in your area that you want friends of Fulbright to sign up to as well, you can make that public and give them the link. Equally with news stories, you can make them public so friends of Fulbright can still find out what's going on. So the platform itself is contained, but there are ways of surfacing content to your broader stakeholders. That's a great point, Rob. Yeah. I, I, and also, I know we, we went over this in the past. Um, I think Shaz and Lisa went over kind of the going forward how um, chapters will receive um, the foreign Fulbrighters lists. So when visiting Fulbrighters come to the US, in the past we used to give you a list, but the, um, the ECA and the State Department has de is deciding that most, most people will receive, they won't receive a list, but the, the Fulbrighter, visiting Fulbrighters will be automatically placed into your group uh, through this app. So that's how you'll be able to contact uh, visiting Fulbrighters is through this application because they'll automatically be put into your chapter space. And so, you know, whenever the fall rolls around, hopefully, um, I don't know, maybe next fall, but at some point, um, new users will be added to your chapter space into this from this application automatically. And you will see the new visiting Fulbrighters through this application because the State Department is encouraging, almost requiring uh, visiting Fulbrighters to use this app application to connect and to be able to be known uh, in this space, in this community. So I have one more question. If I was a Fulbrighter, for instance, in Bolivia, which I was, and I'm right now in central Pennsylvania, can I be in both of the uh, groups? Yeah, to... Yes, yes. You can be in both, um, in both groups. That's a really good question. Yeah. So me, I, I did my, my Fulbright in Egypt, so I could be part of the uh, Egypt, Egyptian Commission and also about a part of the uh, local DC chapter, NCAC chapter. Now, one more question. If I'm doing research in Egypt, but I'm in Bolivia and whatever, can I be in three groups? Um, I think so. Rob, can uh, people be in three groups? Yep, so people can be in as many groups as they like. So as well as automatically being put into a group. So if, for example, you're in San Francisco, you'll automatically be put in the San Francisco chapter group, but you can also then choose to join every other chapter in America if you want to find out what's going on. So you're compulsorily put in one, maybe two groups, but you can opt into any other groups you want. Great question. Hey, uh, Munir. Yeah. Uh, could you talk to them a bit about those interest groups? There were some you know, if you're interested in a particular topic or a particular area of research, uh, groups do not have to be based on geography. They can also be based on substantive interest. Um, yes. Yeah, correct. Yeah. If you're, um, if you're a public health 
expert and you want to be chatting with other public health guys. Um, so yeah, that's a great point, John. And so here you can see under the communities tab, um, there is um, like journalism, humanities, business, social political science, and you'll see how many followers they have. So this one has 282 members or people in that group. So if you decide that you want to be in that group, you can go ahead and request to be added to that. Um, so yeah, these are like academic and professional spaces for people to, you know, add, have comments. Um, you know, might people might people uh, put some opportunities in there, uh, some questions. So all the Fulbrighters who are into law, you know, here they are, or art. So, you know, there, there are subspaces within the Fulbrighter app that could be very useful to um, the, the broader Fulbright community. If I could also make one more comment. Uh -huh. uh, so, you that the, the success of this platform depends on at least two things. One is the number of people within it. Uh, so we are, as an association, ECA, the commissions, uh, on an institutional level, we're very committed to encouraging as many folks as we can, Fulbrighters, to be on this. Because let's say you're in, based in Arkansas. If only two people in Arkansas are on the Fulbrighter, it's not going to work very well. But if several hundred Fulbrighters from Arkansas are on there, then it's, it will be a success. So whatever you can do to promote engagement on the Fulbrighter among your chapter members, that's gonna be great. Um, the second one is your own commitment to this. So it's so fantastic that uh, more than 50 of you are on this call, which is just tremendous. Um, if you can follow through and start using this platform on a regular basis, I know it's a little scary and there's lots to, to learn about, but uh, with Munir's help and Lisa and Rob and all of those videos, you'll get the hang of it. And the more you put on this, the more the various members will have reason to go there and engage. So again, more people, more chapters, works really well. So that's my, just my pitch for, for staying committed to this thing. Thanks, John. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely echoing what John said. Um, also, it makes, it makes his life easier as chapters if, um, if you know that 90% of your chapter members are in this space, then you have one place to message them. Um, I know that some chapters are a little more fragmented as far as like Facebook and other platforms. But if you could have, you know, just your website and the Fulbrighter app, I mean, that, that, would, that would make life easier. Um, but it just depends on your member engagement and member, and it also depends on uh, chapter specifics. So some chapters are extremely active on multiple platforms, but maybe you're a smaller chapter, then this definitely would be, um, I think, your, you know, your number one and two um, go to space to um, communicate and um, post things. So, um, so yeah. Um, Leslie, uh, oh yeah, thanks Rob for answering the question. So a, a good question was, are only paid members on the app? And no, it's um, everyone, as long as you're a Fulbrighter, you can be, you can be on the app. Can I chime in here a minute? Yeah, please do. Can you show off the page with the videos on? Do you so say you the page with yeah, the so videos? If, yeah, so if you go to communities at the top and then click managing your group area at the bottom. So Munir has very much oversold the videos I've produced. <laughs> um, they're just me talking, uh, which is not the most pleasant thing to hear, but they do provide kind of step-by-step -step guidance for each piece of functionality. So the video you can see there takes you through um, essentially setting up your group. So how to upload banner images, embed social media widgets. Um, and obviously as it's a video, you can pause, stop and watch it again. And Munir, if you scroll down, you then have individual videos for each of these different pieces of functionality, news, events, forum, campaigns, and the media center. 
Now, obviously, you don't have to use all these pieces of functionality. You might not want to have um, email campaigns going out to the platform. That's fine. These are kind of optional for you to watch if you want. All these videos are, though, is just me talking over a demonstration of the platform. So hopefully, if things seem a little bit confusing when you first log in, these videos can take you through in excruciating detail what you can do. The other thing I would say is this platform is a new platform. Um, it's not perfect. Some of you have flagged up in the chat some of the counterintuitive things it does, improvements you want. One of the advantages of this platform over Facebook or LinkedIn is we own it. So if we want developments, we can put them forward, improve it, and make sure that it's delivering what is necessary for Fulbrighters. So as you're being to get to grips with the platform, feel free to feed feedback through to the FA. If you need more videos, if you need more guidance, um, I and the FA are always here to support you um, in getting you set up. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, it's great. Can you enlarge your screen, Munir? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see if I... Is that a little... Is that better for everyone? Yeah. I'll keep it large like this. I hope this, this is better. So, yeah. So, just again, to go to these videos, you'll be getting a link, but... Um, to go to these videos, you go to communities and managing your group area, and that's how you end up at this space. Uh, but you also get a link um, with it for with the follow up email uh, after this webinar. Can I chime in with something else? So Elaine yeah, asked a very please good do, question. Please do, Rob. Thank you. Um, about the email functionality within the platform, um, Elaine's asked whether you'll have to use Mailchimp to communicate with people who are not Fulbrighters. There is functionality in the platform to send out emails you create in the platform to a list of email addresses. So if you want to communicate with legislators, friends of Fulbright using the platform, you can do that. Um, that's not in my video demonstration of campaigns. But if that's something that Elaine or anyone else thinks is very valuable, um, I can do a demonstration of how you do that. So if you did want to migrate from MailChimp to this platform, that would be possible. Um, I, I'm gonna. I'll go ahead and answer this question. Um, uh, the question is, um, do you have an email list of all the current Fulbrighters or alumni, and how are you planning to invite them all? So, Rob and I have been working together. Um, I've been working on a census project to locate a lot of uh, all the, all the Fulbrighters, hopefully um, U.S. Fulbrighters, and so we have a lot in our database um, from our newsletter and from the past. So we've slowly been emailing um, batches of Fulbright alums uh, about this, this application. And we've, we've put in the, the newsletter. So we're trying to get the word out. But if you do run into Fulbright alums uh, who haven't heard about the Fulbrighter app, please tell them and please have them um, uh, go ahead and register. Um, so the a question was what, what's MailChimp is a email platform that you can mass email a bunch of people. Um, some people use, um, a variety of things, but MailChimp is a popular one. That's the one we use. Um, but what Rob is saying is that, um, if you, if you wanted, it's possible to only use the Fulbrighter as a, the, your main email hub, but, uh, for us, as the, like the Fulbright Association, we, we're using a variety of platforms. So we're using MailChimp, we use our website, we use Facebook, Twitter, and this app. Um, but the integrations that Rob have, has made has made it easier. So like the news being automatically posted to the Fulbrighter app when we post a blog post on our website is great, um, as well as the... Um, the uh, feed on our for our Facebook and Twitter that goes automatically to the application. Um, can I? Yeah, go ahead, Rob. Yeah, yeah, it's all you, man. Go for it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, 
I've consciously I've said a lot of things in the chat. I'm aware I've got one action to think about whether I can notify people when new people join the platform, uh, join your chapter. I'll look into that. If there's anything else I've promised to do or I've missed, feel free to email me afterwards. Um, I'm just conscious that there's been a lot of questions. If I've missed anything, um, just email me afterwards. I'm always happy to respond to any other questions. So um, joining other communities. Um, so let's say I want to join, um, I don't know, Uruguay, even though I'm not part of Uruguay. If you just hit this join button here, this burgundy button, then it will basically submit a request. Some, some um, groups are open. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, but if they're open, I think you're automatically put into that group or added. But some groups it might be private, and so it'll send a request to that uh, admin, and then they would have to approve your um, request to join. But yeah, the join button is really easy, just right here. Um, Darlene asked about uh, returning scholars automatically getting one year free membership. Yes, um, through the Fulbright Association, they would get um, a, f a free year of membership as a returning Fulbrighter, but. Um, it doesn't really have much to do with this app. So this app is free, it's open, um, and your membership isn't tied to any part of this um, online platform. John's asked a very good question to me about what the difference is between communities and groups. These are essentially two terms we just use interchangeably. Um, the functionality is groups, that's what they are but we've used communities as a way of just indicating these are engagement spaces primarily, a space for people to come together and discuss rather than sort of groups. Um, we like the word community really. Um, I, I do, I'm going to go ahead and I want to show kind of what, what it would look like if you posted a, something to your, um, to your uh, blog or your website. So for example, just recently I posted this alumni profile, um, this ETA from Malaysia, uh, Katie. And so if you clicked on it here, you would see the full text of that post as if it was on your website. So anyone in the Fulbrighter app would be able to see these posts that you've made. So sometimes they're about events, um, but they could also be about news in your area about Fulbrighters fighting COVID or something like that. So anyway, so these, these, these news pieces are really cool. And then of course they have like a share button. So if you want to share it um, and yeah, basically the, the, the news portion is really cool that it's integrated from your website. So um, once you post, it will automatically come come here. Um, Sue, you're um, having some problems with MailChimp. Um, might be able to help you offline for that one. Um, so um, yeah, MailChimp and spam and things going to junk inboxes. There's ways to help that, um, but uh, yeah, what well, we can we can talk offline about um, any Mailchimp issues if you'd like. Um, Lanier, this is Shaz. Uh huh. Go ahead, Shaz. Um, I just wanted to announce to all the chapter leaders that ECA plans to um, have all the visiting Fulbrighters available on online through the Fulbrighter app. Uh, they have informed us they will not be sharing lists with us, but they will be added to the app and chapters will be able to communicate with them via their groups. Um, how long that takes, how effectively it can be managed, um, I mean, that's an offline thing with Rob, uh, but that's what their plan is. They're also planning to have the outgoing returned grantees added to the app so that chapters get access to return grantees through the Fulbrighter as well. So it's going to be multiple platforms, multiple methods of communicating. Um, but my suggestion is that 
have really learned how to use the app um, because it's only going to be for Fulbrighters. non Fulbrighters are not going to be allowed on the app. Uh, but then you have other methods of communicating through other like MailChimp or just straight emails uh, with all your group, but use the app effectively because these changes are coming and have been announced by ECA. So, so you're not surprised next year that we don't we want lists. We will most likely not be getting the lists. And I just wanted to make that announcement. Yeah, thanks, Shaz. I, I, yeah, I, I didn't mention before, I mentioned part of that, but not the US returning Fulbrighters that would be added, which is a really good feature because we hadn't had that in the past. Um, I know that, um, so we can continue to answer questions for maybe a couple, maybe a couple more questions if people have them. Um, otherwise, I was going to turn it over to um, Lisa and Shaz if you have any chapter announcements while we're all on. Um, and we will be sending again, we'll just reiterate, we're going to be sending out a kind of a follow up email with a recording of this webinar. Um, the, the link to the videos that Rob made and then um, Maybe some other details um, from Lisa to you guys um, about the Fulbrighter app space. Thanks, Munir. Yeah, this, um, so I hope this is useful for you guys. Um, just to reiterate a couple of things that Munir already said, but um, this, I know that there was some talk about like why to use this platform over other platforms and some of the things Munir mentioned, um, like being able to see, you can see members on this platform who might not even be members of the Fulbright Association or know who we are. So this is a great way for us to um, reach out to members who we can get on board and start inviting to events and um, tell them who we are. Um, like Shaz and Munir mentioned, it's a great way to access visiting Fulbrighters because they'll be automatically added to where, um, they're, where they're going to study. Um, it will be automatically updated every time someone joins the app. You will see that up there will be um, a person added to your group in the app. So it's a great way to just continually send out notifications and really reach um, members. And um, like Rob mentioned, you can still share the content with friends of Fulbright and people who are not on the app. So we really hope you're gonna use the app. Um, it's a great way to reach out to people. And I hope that you know this is useful for you. And Munir, thank you so much for doing an awesome job and Rob as well of helping us understand how to use it. Um, we're all still learning as well. So we're happy to do that learning alongside you. And um, the only announcement that I have is for you to please send me um, your administrator for the app. You can send it to my email, lisa at fulbright.org, and then um, we'll add you onto the app so you can have administrator um, settings. So, yeah. Thank you, Munir. All right. Um, Bob, I just saw your question about uh, incoming visiting Fulbrighters in future years. I don't, uh, the idea is to use the Fulbrighter app to communicate with visiting Fulbrighters who promote your program and your events. So you will be using multiple venues to promote. One would be the app. You, I don't think you will be getting lists or be able to download lists. You'll just be communicating with visiting providers through the app. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. And um, thank you all for coming and joining. We appreciate you uh, taking your time um, out of your quarantine lives to join us online for the, this webinar. And um, we will be sending out an email hopefully by the end of the day maybe um, with all some further details and the videos. And um, please reach out to us if you have questions during this process. We know it's kind of, uh, you know, sometimes challenging to get onto a, a new platform, but we think that um, those challenges are going to be paid off many, many fold with the capabilities and the opportunities there are for this um, awesome, awesome application. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's John, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt, but there, there have been a couple of questions about the relationship between this app and membership. And uh, uh, I, I wanna be uh, open and frank with this community about about this. Um, we believe that the Fulbrighter 
is an extraordinary tool for engaging people who might not otherwise be connected to us as members. Um, membership uh, should have a, a wider definition than, um, than simply paying uh, a fee. Um, it's, uh, this, is, this is a great tool that we are exploring and invested in and we want you to use as best you can. We think that it's gonna have terrific payoff for us as an organization in driving membership because people will see value in our programming and they'll wanna be more involved directly in our work. Um, it is certainly true that people can be on this platform without being a member. And the reason for that is that they are, this is developed for the community, supported by ECA, um, by commissions and others. Um, so this is, uh, this is not something that we created. It was created that we are taking advantage of. Um, I just, you know, it's, it's zero sum game. Uh, this is going to be an exciting opportunity for all of us to engage and connect, um, to share stories, to share information and so on. And that I think will have uh, a driving effect to membership. Um, it's, uh, it, it's an experiment in the making but I'm, I'm excited about it and I think you should be too. Um, I, I'm gonna also, I, I see that there was a question about like, um, I know the question is going around that in this COVID-19 world, I see from Elaine and from Leslie had the same question that in this current COVID time, you know, how are we supposed to have met, like get new membership um, in this time? And it is a challenge because it's an online world and all this stuff is free online. So the in-person chapter events um, are not happening right now. So um, the question about, um, you know, what, what, what is the benefits of membership at this time um, is a question that even we are asking ourselves. So it's, um, it's a challenge, no, no matter how you slice it. Um, but the thing is that as the Fulbright Association, we're here to serve the alumni of Fulbright no matter what and any time. So it doesn't matter if we have, you know, for in-person events or online events or um, promoting the Fulbright app or getting people together online. So, you know, we're here just to serve the alumni regardless of, you know, this kind of crazy season of, of life. So um, I, 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 I don't have a great answer for, for Elaine and Leslie, but I think that, um, if we are committed to serving alumni, then the alumni association will continue. And that might look a little different in um, you know, these months and in the future. Monir, could I add to that? Sure. I think that's extremely well put. Uh, I think that the way that we're thinking about this is uh, the short run and the long run. In the short run, what we're trying to do is to create more online communities and more online programming, uh, mentoring programs, uh, webinars, the kind of things you're seeing here on the Fulbrighter app. These are a really great way to remind people we're here, to connect people who have not engaged with us directly. Uh, maybe they've never attended the chapter event, but now, now that they're seeing that you're reaching out, you're supportive, uh, you've got interesting things to say. They say, hey, this is worthwhile. Let me check it out. In the short run, too, we can do some planning for the fall. We have to stay optimistic that this crisis will pass and we'll be able to engage more directly with each other. This is a good time to think about what you will do in the fall uh, and how you might use a tool like this to promote things that are going on in the fall. You can also use this as we are uh, on the national level to provoke interesting strategic questions. Should we be more of a hybrid um, association where a, more of our stuff is offered online uh, and decentralized and, and we also do uh, events. So instead of just being mostly an event driven organization, we have opportunities to do other really exciting things. So, you know, I see, uh, and, and the board agrees with this, and my team does too, Monir, Shaz, everybody, Lisa, we see um, opportunity in crisis. Um, and that's an opportunity to, to 
think anew and try new things, like jumping on the Fulbrighter. Thanks. Thanks, John. Um, uh, there's a question, I think, for Shaz and Lisa about the uh, grant funds. Um, I don't know if you'd like to, do the grant funds still have to be spent by June 30th? Okay. Um, they, we, we, are, we, have, we are in the process of informing chapters that they can use the grant funds till June 30th, but they have to tell us by the end of this month whether they will be using those funds uh, in August or September. Uh, if they know that they're not going to use them, they need to let us know and they have to be returned. There's no rollover option. There's no um, deadline uh, delay beyond uh, 30th of September. That's the last most end. But we absolutely have to know by May 1st whether you're going to use those funds or not. And if you don't you inform us, we will just assume you're returning those funds. Um, and there will be no forthcoming um, approval later in the year, in the middle, middle of the summer that, oh, can we use them? Because we would have already reported that you're returning the funds. So it's very important for you to reevaluate with your boards what you're going to do, whether you're going to use those funds. Virtual meetings do not require any use of funds, what you could use is some of the funds to maybe pay for some technology, technological services like a Zoom license in order for your board to meet or you to have virtual happy hours with your chapters, um, chapter members. But other than that, um, you know, you can't have virtual uh, galas, you can't have virtual <laughs> food uh, consuming parties. <laughs> so. Um, I, I, I'm, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny, but it's really not that funny either. But, you know, so think about all that and you have to absolutely let us know by April 30th, whether you're going to use those funds or return them. Um, a, a good question about the Fulbrighter app that Rob answered in the chat, but just wanted to make everyone aware that asking about how many admins per chapter you're allowed to have. Um, we're saying at least one, but you could have two, you could have three, just depending on uh, the size of your chapter or who would like to be involved um, on the admin side. Um, but definitely just to make sure that you're all on the same page as admins so that one person isn't doing something a little different than the other. So um, we would suggest to have two uh, just in case, but if you only have one admin, that's fine too. Okay, so um, we're about two minutes away from from three, so um, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this up and thank everyone for coming. Please send us your email, further questions, um, and um, we're looking forward to having people's chapter spaces up and running and you be able to engage online with uh, the Fulbright community. So thank you so much and uh, have a great day.